This video was sponsored by Squarespace. I've mentioned Squarespace so much on my channel because it's the perfect place to build your website and manage your online portfolio and shop. Recently, I launched my Valentine's Day sale, which is still going on. I want to show you how simple it was to upload the banner right into the front page. You simply drag and drop and it's all live and ready to go. As an artist who manages everything on my own, I find Squarespace to be super functional and extremely user-friendly. And if you ever need help, they have 24-7 customer service, which is extremely helpful. Head to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Jess Carp to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. With that, let's get to some painting. Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope that you're all doing well. And this video is gonna be a little bit different, a little bit more slow paced. I wanted to share my full gouache process using a limited black and white palette. I'll be doing a sculpture portrait study. Today I'll be creating a study of this beautiful sculpture. I've already prepared my reference along with all of my supplies and I'm now grabbing my pencil. Let's get started. So I've already laid out my black and white onto my palette and I'm going to begin with the sketch. I'm going to start off by doing a sketch of just geometric shapes. This is how I start off my portraits. I like starting out with a 2H pencil. A hard pencil will make sure that once I begin painting, the pencil will not smudge. Now first, let's talk about choosing your references when doing studies. I think it's really important to choose references that have a very, very great light source, meaning there is high contrast and there are clear shadows and highlights. As you can see in the reference, there are clear shadows on the right side and on the left side, there are some clear highlights. So I really think choosing sculptures are a great way to study some portraits because you can see the form very, very clearly. I wanted to do a little bit of a slow down process today and I've been doing this with my patrons and this was one of the references that I had for their monthly motivation worksheets, which I put out every single month. And I wanted to kind of share some of my slower down process with the exclusive videos that I do there as well. So what I'm first doing is I'm just mapping out the foundation, which is super, super important. The way you lay down your sketch is the way that your finished piece is going to look. If your sketch is off, then your painting is most likely going to be off. You can absolutely fix things during the painting process and you can keep your sketch really, really loose. However, if you lay down a really nice foundation for yourself before beginning your study, it's gonna really, really help you when you start tackling process with paint. So I'm just slowly going across the whole image and just observing the shapes, the angles that I see. At first, things may not lay down the way you would expect, but as you begin to inspect and observe the image and your reference for your study, things begin to kind of reveal themselves and you'll be able to measure. For example, if I laid out this angle of the nose, I'll be able to lay out all of the other kind of features that are going to be going off this shape. So I really, really, really measure these angles that begin to form and I kind of inspect as I go in and get to know the reference a bit more. I chose a sculpture for today because I think that it's really great and a little bit of a low pressure since you see lots of lots of shapes, clear shapes. So that's what I wanted to bring forth as an example for a little bit of a real time painting and sketching session. Like mentioned before, I do these over on my Patreon and we even do some live sessions on there. So if you're curious and like these type of videos, you can check it out over on Patreon. We have an awesome community on there. 
I get many, many requests on real-time videos, so I just decided to share how we can do a little bit of a slowdown process for today. Keep it nice and relaxed, and you can join along as you wish. Consider it a little surprise treat. So I'm slowly mapping out different shapes that I see because once I begin painting with gouache, I'll be able to paint in the shapes themselves. But the more mapping out I do, now I don't want to spend too much time, but the more mapping out I do for myself, the more information I'll have once I begin with my paints. So if you are choosing reference photos, you want to make sure that you have a clear light source. That's first. If your image looks flat, and especially when you set it to black and white, and I'll talk about the importance of black and white studies in a little bit, and I'll be putting together a full video on that subject because that I feel super passionate about, and it's often overlooked, but it's very, very important in my opinion. So stay tuned for that video. But... If you set your image into black and white and the image looks flat, there isn't high contrast, you don't see any highlights or shadows, you might want to mess with the uh, little kind of filters to make sure that you see a contrast, which will help your paintings a whole lot. It's really important to find the perfect balance between that contrast, but regardless, I do recommend painting from life or drawing from life by setting your subject up under a lamp and setting the lamp on an angle from the left side or the right side or even from above or below will allow you to see some clear lights and darks. So I think that the sketch is coming together slowly. I'm just going to keep looking back and forth. I'm going to map out where the background will sit. Gonna go off the paper just a little bit for me what helps me see are kind of like having clear shapes so in my mind i know that this is going to be all in shadow and then some highlights begin to reveal themselves and show through in the hair and this headpiece and the sculpture now it looks like the volume of the top of the uh, floral kind of texture we have up here there's more volume so i'm just extending it out and these are things that you just begin to adjust when you're painting and sometimes when you start sketching you'll add one element and then once you begin painting you'll you'll end up seeing that oh the hairline needs to be adjusted or oh the eyebrows a little bit lower so these are the kind of the things that you begin to see as you begin to observe and as you begin to develop the study. Now I realized that the mouth just needs to be slightly lower so I'm adding that in. So take your time and really observe. I'll be able to continue some of more of the details with paint. I highly recommend putting into practice to study sculpture specifically. You really begin to get the form down. I think that when I studied in Italy and I was painting the sculptures from life there, I learned a whole lot. It was extremely helpful to study them. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention with you guys today. And I really hope that you'll find this helpful. I'm a big believer on practicing your skills and continuing to create studies and involve that in your artistic practice. And no matter the level, no matter if you're a beginner or advanced, these are always helpful to keep your muscles and artistic muscles, in fact, kind of in shape.
So before continuing to paint, I'm just checking all my angles one last time into the reference and I'll be able to fix some of the details when I begin painting. However, I just want to make sure I check it one last time, making sure all of the features are parallel to one another, which is super important and a great tip for you to keep in mind. And then I am ready to begin painting. So I will be using a large brush now to tone the paper. I'm gonna mix a nice light grayish color for when I begin toning. And to quickly talk about, in the previous video, I got a question regarding when I'm actually painting with gouache, how come I decide to gesso the paper of my sketchbook before I begin painting? And there are times where I leave it ungessoed, which is what I did here to make sure that the paper absorbs the gouache. And sometimes when I'm painting more complex scenes, I like to tone the gesso with the paper because I'm able to lift the gouache. And you may not know how that is, but when you actually try it, you'll be able to see how you're able to lift up the gouache when you begin painting. When you actually leave the paper ungessoed, it doesn't allow you to actually lift up the paint. It really just depends on the look that I'm going for and the process that I'm taking, but I do like to alternate between those two techniques of gessoing and not gessoing sometimes. I'm just beginning by mapping out the shapes like we discussed in the very beginning. I'm leaving some of the areas light because I want the paper to show through, that's just a choice that I am making currently. And I'm adding in very, 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 very light washes for the start. And since I have that really nice sketch under laid out, it's gonna really help me when I begin painting. Now, I'm actually keeping this little towel beside me so that I can take away some of the paint and make sure my brush is not overflowing with pigment or water. And I add water in certain areas so that it can really lighten the value. The more water that you're gonna add, the lighter the value is gonna become. Now the background is gonna be darker than the sculpture itself. So I am adding the background immediately making sure when you're doing your studies to add a background, it's really going to bring dimension and show environment to your study. Now, there are times in our process when things can look a bit crazy and you know, it's not perfect just yet. It's important to trust the process. It's important to take your time don't worry, things will come together. So just be very, very, very positive as you go on. So in certain areas, I'm just laying in darker values just to begin slowly, slowly pushing them. And as you can see, since the paper is not gessoed, it's immediately absorbing the gouache which is just a choice that I make with different papers and different subjects. Sometimes I even gesso the pages in advance so that if I'm out sketching on location, the gessoed pages are ready. But today I wanted to try this study out without gessoing it to kind of create that loose effect when I'm doing the underpainting. So it's looking pretty good so far. Honestly, sometimes I would leave it like this in some of my urban sketches from Italy from the travel sketchbook tour. You know, I actually left some of the sketches super loose and I do think that they even look better sometimes when you keep them loose like this. And since we have that beautiful drawing, underdrawing, we're able to see the pencil show through and I personally really like that. So these are just little decisions that you make as you go on, as you keep painting, as you keep experimenting. And I'm just sharing them with you today. Alrighty, so once I have finished 
the mapping out of the overall shapes and light washes, I'm going to switch to a thinner brush, uh, maybe this one actually, and I'm going to begin slowly mixing slightly darker values and pushing out the next layer of shadows. So I'm just going to begin by observing general areas, laying in my value and leaving it there. I'm not going to overwork the area, I'm just going to place the shadow and then leave it. There are a bunch of details in the hair of the sculpture, but I'm actually going to treat them as shapes as well. As you guys can see, the main point is shapes, shapes, shapes. I'm going to most likely say this so many times in the video. If you happen to count, <laughs> leave a comment. Right, so I'm just starting off at the top, as you can see, and making my way around. This uh, pigment right here is called Perline Black. It's actually a greenish blackish color. And I think it's going to work nicely in the background to have a nice green shade. And instead of using black, I like to use the Perline Green or it's called, sorry, it's called Perline Black. And I like to use that one because it's not so harsh. And it still provides a really beautiful tone. And I like to use it in my gouache paintings to mix it in with shadows of its complement, like a Alizarin Crimson. That's a really beautiful combination to get a really nice deep shadow. Okay, so... I'm very lightly beginning to observe. I wanted to show you guys some real-time painting footage so you see how I slowly and carefully do some of my studies. And I think that'll be helpful for everyone asking what we do over on Patreon. And I think it'll be a nice little way to hang out together if you want to paint along. So let me know if you're enjoying this. This is something a little bit new for the channel, which is all right, but I've been trying to keep painting and studying some references while I am completing the studio. Little updates on that are coming super soon. I'm just putting together some finishing touches. I know that part one was really exciting and thank you all so much for your kind words. It was so amazing to uh, read all your comments. You guys are super supportive and I'm so, so happy to have you all. So while I'm doing all this, I'm actually really keeping in mind to keep things loose. Even if I lay down this harsh shadow back here, I'm taking a little bit of water to soften that. That's gonna really, really help create some softer transitions you want to keep things as soft as possible when i was first starting out i would always keep everything really tight and i i still do but it's important to just remind yourself to soften certain things and again that's a stylistic approach but it really depends on the look and the feel that you want to create it's all up to you you have full control there's no worries, just enjoying the process, painting, and most importantly, doing what makes you happy, right? So as I go on, I'm slowly picking and choosing where I want certain values to be a bit darker and where I want them to just stay white of the paper like I'm doing here and leaving here. But you still see some shadows, so it's important to very, very lightly blend that in. And I picked black and white because I really feel that there's a big importance in black and white studies, which a video on that will be coming out shortly. So if you're not yet subscribed and you don't wanna miss it, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We are doing lots of positive, inspirational videos here, and I'm here to help. So I thought that it was actually bad that I left the kind of hair line or the hair 
going off the page but now that i'm painting it it's kind of coming out really cool and i actually like that so once again trust the process what you may think is a flaw may come out to be something very very good so if you're currently painting along and you are being doubtful i'm here to remind you to believe in yourself and trust the process what's the worst you are not happy about it and okay you try another time but no matter what every piece and every study we do is a learning process every study has its how do i how can i put this in a deeper form it has its purpose and you know you'll learn no matter what plus we're here doing it together so that should make it a little less stressful hopefully <laughs> All right, looking pretty good so far. Just going to keep adding lighter shadows everywhere, pushing it in levels. This is the fun part where you get to pick and choose selectively what you want to stand out. And I'm gonna start pushing in this background back here ever so slightly. If you're ever in doubt, just take it slow, take it in layers. Gouache is great because you can layer it, you can have it go opaque if you want to start very very lightly and build up as you go on it's perfect for that and that's actually how i like to use it there's so many ways that you can use gouache as you can see some areas there were still wet and it's kind of benefiting here since you're able to keep that wet on wet technique now that i've got the hair ready i'm gonna start very slowly pushing out the shadows in the eye area. I love creating portrait studies because I feel like with each study I learn something new, something new reveals itself to me. And I hope that this inspires you to create some studies of your own, put your favorite subject and supplies into practice. And with today's real time video, if you need a friend to sit and paint along with you, you can just play the video and it's almost like I'm right there with you. Here's the finished outcome, a nice sculpture portrait study for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I hope that the tips that I've mentioned today you found very helpful. If you did find this helpful, be sure to leave a thumbs up, stay tuned for some more tips videos, check out my website for the ongoing sale currently for the next two weeks. And if you like the real time videos and if you want to participate in some live sessions together, be sure to check out my Patreon for more of these kind of real time exclusive videos. Thank you so much for watching and supporting. Don't forget to stay creative and of course, do it all with love. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.